So in the previous lecture on just Bayesian theory, we have seen that it is advantageous if you can express a joint probability distribution, like this one here, as a product of conditionals, like this one here. That saves you a lot of uh, memory and also a lot of computation. Now, Bayesian networks or graphical models in general sort of use um, a graphical representation of these products of conditionals and that's shown further below. So this product can be represented by such a graph where the variables here in this in this product correspond to the nodes of the graph and the conditional relationships represented here by these vertical bars are represented by arrows. So if B points to C, that means C depends on B. Here you see C depends on B, but C also depends on E, therefore E points to C as well. E in turn depends on D and B. E depends on B and D, so B and D point to E. D does not depend on anything, so nothing points to D. Likewise, P A, yeah. but B depends on A, so we have this P of B given A here. So there's one-to-one -one mapping between this equation or this this expression and such a graphical formulation, and the expression is rep is repeated down here. So that would be a Bayesian network. A Bayesian network is characterized by these directed edges. There's also Gibson networks, they have non-directed edges. That's a different subject. Um, because such a product may not have loops or cycles, so it's impossible to, or it's not nonsensible to write P of B given A times P of A given B, this is an acyclic graph, so there are no loops in this graph, and therefore it makes sense to use uh, terms from family trees to indicate the relationship between the nodes. Like C would be the child of E and B, and B would be a parent of C, A would be a grandparent of C, etc. Now, the concept of conditional independence or dependence. So that indicates that, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, a reminder what statistical dependence means or independence means. We've seen in the previous lectures that if P of A given B equals P of A, that would be one way of expressing that A and B are statistically independent. Or one could also write P of A B equals P of A times P of B. That would be an equivalent way of formulating that A and B are statistically independent. Now, this property of being statistically independent may depend on the presence of another variable or the knowledge about another variable. And that gives rise to the notion of conditional dependence or independence. Here in this equation, for example, A is obviously independent of C because we can safely ignore it on the right side. Right, So this corresponds to this type of equation. But it depends on the presence of B. right? So if B is known, then A is independent of C. We want to discuss this now 
with three little examples shown down here. So we have three variables a, b, and c, and they are connected in different ways. So in example a, a is the parent of b and b is the parent of c. Now it's quite obvious if nothing is known about these variables, then um, they're all statistically dependent. So if you know a little bit of A or if you know A, that tells you something about B as well as C. However, it's intuitively also quite clear, if you know the value of B, then knowing A does not help you in guessing C, because you know everything uh, that influences C already by knowing B. R can't a can't you can't tell you anything about B that you don't know already because you know B. So therefore, A and C are statistically independent if you know B. Yeah. This connection is called a serial connection. Here, B is parent to A and C. That's called a diverging connection. And again, if nothing is known, then they're all statistically dependent. However, if B is known, then A again cannot tell you anything about C. C directly depends only on B and could, and one could benefit from information from A only in so far as A tells us something about B that in, then in turn tells us something about C. However, if we know B, R can't tell us anything about B that we don't know already. So therefore, if we know B, then A and C are statistically independent. So the third example is if A and C are the parents of B. Now this is a converging connection. So let me explain this by an example. Eye color. So let's assume these are the two parents of a child. And you know from biology uh, lectures in, in school, hopefully, that a brown is, uh, is the dominant gene. So if, with respect to eye color, brown is the dominant uh, gene and blue is the recessive gene. That means if a child has two parents with blue eyes, or uh, let me phrase it up differently. If a person has blue eyes, you know it has two blue genes. If it has brown eyes, it might have two brown genes or might have a brown gene and a blue gene because brown is dominant. It is sufficient to have one brown gene and then the person has brown eyes. So if the parents have blue eyes, then it's certain that the child gets blue eyes. If one parent has blue eyes and the child has brown eyes, then it's certain that the child has one brown gene, at least, right? But it can't get a brown gene from parent C. It only can get a blue gene, so therefore it has to get the brown gene from A. So, if we know the child has brown eyes and one, then knowing one parent has blue eyes, tells us that the other parent must have brown eyes. So that's a situation where A and C become conditionally dependent if we know B. If we don't know the eyes of the, uh, of the, um, of the color of the eyes of the child, then, I mean, A and C are just two people from the, from the population. And if you don't assume sort of a direct connection like people with brown eyes tend to prefer people with brown eyes, then uh, then uh, there's no reason why A should tell us something about C. Okay, so serial connection and divergent connection are sort of similar in the sense that knowing B makes A and C statistically dependent independent, sorry, makes them independent, while 
uh, the convergent connection here, A and C become statistically dependent if you know B. So now this was all intuitively argued. You can actually also show that. Um, so here we have the different uh, products of uh, conditionals to express the joint probability. And now if you, we can try to prove this relationship or such a relationship somehow. So if we take um, network A, so this one here, and we consider P of A given B and C, then we can work our way through. I mean, this first of all, by definition, is always this one here. Then we can plug in our definition of the joint probability, which is P of C given B, P of B given A, P of A. And down here we do the same, but we marginalize over A in order to get um, B and C. Here P of C given B cancels out. So we are left with this part. This is just P of B. Yeah. And P of B given A times P of A is P of A given B. And then we can sort of write this again as a conditional and get P of A given B. Yeah. So it's all very elementary Bayesian uh, formalism. And that tells us if we know B, if B is known, then A and C become statistically independent. And that's what we st stated here, right? If B is known, then A and C become statistically independent. One can also derive the, the, the converse, and that's because uh, statistical dependence is generally a symmetric property. So if A and B are statistically dependent, then A depends on B and B depends on A. Or here in this case, A and C are statistically dependent, so C depends on A and A depends on C, or rather are independent, right? So C is independent of A and then, and also A is independent of C. Now, if um, B is not known, then A and C can depend on each other. Um, it's easy to see that the second example is equivalent to the first one because here we have P of B given A times P of A and we know from basic Bayesian formalism that this can be replaced by P of A given B times P of B. And that's actually an interesting observation by itself. So formally it's, it's easy to invert edges like this one here by this formalism, right? We have inverted this edge to this edge, and then we can actually go and invert this edge as well, right? because we have P of C given B times P of B, and we can replace this by P of B given C times P of C. Now maybe I write this here. So this could also be written as P of B given C times P of C, and then we still have P of A given B, sorry. And that would correspond to such a graph. Okay, so these are all equivalent. However, this is really different, right? Because we have this P of B given C and A, which is something that we cannot convert to any of these equations. Yeah. So we see that one can invert edges, yeah, but only as long as a node does not have two parents or does not get two parents. Right. So as long as every node has just one parent, we can um, 
we can invert edges by means of um, just plain Bayesian formalism. Okay, so that covers networks A and B. Now for C it's uh, different. If we have, if we just consider P of A and C and B is not known, yeah, then we can calculate this by plugging in this here and then marginalizing over B. That's what's being done here. And then we see, since this sum here, So this equals 1, so therefore we are just left with P of C times P of A, right? It equals 1 because of normalization condition. So if you don't know B, then A and C are statistically independent, but this is this kind of simplification is not possible uh, for P of A given B, C, or P of C given A, B, thus a and B are not statistically independent if, sorry, A and C are not statistically independent if B is not known. Yeah, as a, as a remark here, things are a bit tricky in so far as, um, I mean, we have a conditional independence here between A and C given B, but this might not hold if we know yet another variable, right? So we really have to consider each uh, individual uh, situation separately. Yeah, here comes a section on inverting edges. We have done, we have covered that already. Okay, so the next topic is the deseparation in Bayesian networks, and for that I, I go back again to these three examples. Um, so deseparation essentially means we can sort of make two nodes in a network, in a larger network than this one here, I mean also in this network, but potentially also in a larger network, two nodes or two sets of nodes statistically independent if certain other nodes are instantiated or not instantiated, right? We have seen here that A and C are statistically independent if B is instantiated, if we know B. That would be a case of deseparation. So knowing B would deseparate A and C. In this network, likewise in this network, because they're essentially equivalent. Right? In this case, A and C would be deseparated if we don't know B. Yeah. And it's not only that we must not know anything about B, it's also if I if I make this a little bit larger than network here, if I add yet another node. D, then knowing something about D would tell us something about B and that again would make A and C statistically dependent. So in order to deseparate A and C, it's not only important that we don't know anything about B, it's also important that we don't know anything about any descendant of B, right? So any child or grandchild, because that would tell us something um, about B as well. So if the connection were the, the other way around, so if it would go um, from D to B, of course then knowing D tells us something about B, but nothing more than, um, nothing that would tell us anything about A and C. Yeah.
like i mean if you know that a coming back to the color example if you know that a has two brown jeans then you know b has brown eyes but that does not tell you anything about the eye color of c it could be blue or could be brown i mean it would be b would have brown eyes because of a yeah. good Yeah. So this is here more general, formulated in a more general term. In more general terms, two nodes A and C in a Bayesian network are de-separated if two Fs, which meaning if and only if, for all paths between A and C, there is an intermediate node B such that either the connection through B is serial or diverging, and B is instantiated. Right. That was these two cases right there's a path from a to c through b and b is instantiated or the connection is converging and neither b nor any of his, its descendants has received evidence so that would be this situation that is a converging connection and neither b nor any of its descendants um, has received evidence. Oh, by the way, I told you that if D points to, to B, I mean, we know something about B, but nothing that would help us saying something about A and C. Uh, that is different if B points to D, because then the state of B only depends on I mean, in a causal sense, sort of, right? Depends on A and C, and sort of has received its state from A and C and tells something, tells us something about its state by telling, uh, sort of, by influencing the state of D, right? So knowing D then tells us something about B that it has received from A and C, while if the error is the other way around, D tells us something about B that it has received from D, so that does not help us anything in saying something about A and C. Yeah. 